Let's have some good news, some great news. Let's go straight over to London to our great friend Esther Kraku. Esther, you've stayed up really late on the night of the coronation. It's great to see you. As always, you've probably been listening to what we've been talking about. We all watched the coronation. It was night time for us. Esther, I want you to get your thoughts about it. Um, but quickly, I just want to play you a grab from the BBC where it seemed the same thing was going on, this denigration. Just apparently the balcony was too white. Have a listen. Oh. Uh, there, there is a bit of me that we've gone from the uh, the, uh, the rich diversity of the Abbey to a terribly white balcony. I'm very <laughs> struck by yes. that. I'm also looking at those younger generations and thinking, uh, what are the nuances that they will inhabit as they grow? So, Esther, tell us about that. But first up, just give us your thoughts on the coronation. You've been there. What's it been like? I mean, the coronation was, I, I must admit, it was Fantastic. I streamed it on my phone and with my brother as well in the living room. Um, so I was watching on two screens while it was happening. Um, and it was really exciting. I mean, there were loads of sneers saying this is, you know, too traditional. Um, but that's what makes this country great. It's the fact that, you know, we were, we were able to stick to such age-long traditions and still represent this country and, and all the realms and, you know, all the members of the Commonwealth in the best way possible. Um, it was really a proud moment. I know many people that travelled from very far to actually attend the coronation because it is a moment in history. I mean, for many people, this is their first coronation ever. This is the first coronation in, in decades. So it was very exciting. Um, the weather wasn't too bad here in London, actually. Uh, contrary to popular belief, it was just drizzled slightly, which was actually, uh, you know, very British <laughs> in that sense <laughs> yes. as well. Um, with regards to that, the, the BBC pundit saying that the balcony was all white, I, I found it extremely distasteful. I can't believe that our national broadcaster actually let that air, uh, but I have many problems with our national broadcaster, mainly because we have to pay for it. Um, yeah. But I just, I found it very confusing uh, because it was just such a contrast to all the developments and the progress that we've made, you know, such a multicultural coronation ceremony with different faiths and people from all over the, the realm and the Commonwealth. And for this pundit to sit on TV and say, oh, unfortunately, a white family happens to be white. And <laughs> which is exactly what she said. It, 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 was, it was incredible to me. I just, I just couldn't believe it. Um, I, I, I thought you know, way to, way to paint the obvious. I mean, I remember when, watching the coronation, you know, I saw so many traditional leaders. I saw a leader that I recognized from Ghana, you know, Otumfo Seitutu, um, who is the the, the ch uh, chief of the Asante kingdom. And he was there in traditional Kente garb. And I was I was so impressed by how multicultural that ceremony was. I can't imagine at his coronation if, if a BBC pundit said, actually, oh my gosh, the, the royal family is too black. But apparently it's okay with the British royal family. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Rita, sorry. Rita, sorry. Um, I want to ask about the cost because our left wing ABC was preoccupied with the cost, not just the evils of colonisation, but uh, it wasn't a cheap exercise. It was smaller than the Queen's coronation. But was there a lot of angst in the UK about the cost of this or was it acknowledged that this is almost like a once in a lifetime event and uh, the cost is immaterial? I mean, a lot of the the rhetoric around the cost of the coronation is the same kind of hypo hypocritical rhetoric you hear about the royal family in general. Um, estimates actually accounted for the fact that the royal family really technically cost most Britons 1p a day. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure if you told people, actually, you get to pay for the royal family or the, the BBC licence fee, they would probably choose the royal family. <laughs> uh, but the reality is... <laughs> The reality is many of the people whinging about the cost of the coronation were citing the cost of living crisis. Mm, mm. And I said, you know, it's completely absurd to say that you can't have a coronation because of the cost of living crisis. What if it never ends? What what, what, what appropriate moment in our, in our economic history would be a time to have a coronation or to have any sort of, you know, royal festivities? This is a part of our culture. This is history in the making. And there are some things that matter more than just the, the common dime. It's about national unity and about bringing people together. You know, the same people that were complaining about, the, you know, the cost of living crisis probably have five flat screen TVs in their house, many of which they're not willing to sell or donate to the poor. Um, so it's just, you know, posturing and it's really nonsensical uh, sort of commentary about the, the cost of the coronation. I mean, the royal family brings in so much tourism into the UK and actually it's very good you know, bang for our buck, if you want to say. But also there are many people that would actually pay for the royal family, even if it had nothing to do with money. It's, there's, a, there's a cultural heritage there that's so strong and so valuable across across the realms and you know even uh, across the commonwealth that you can't just put a monetary value on it and i think it's usually juvenile people that don't really want to understand the value of tradition and heritage that tend to make those types of comments james and esther i mean you talk about 
that tradition, uh, you know, and the, the royals and, and all of that. What do you make of the fact that on the one hand, I mean, I'm watching the coverage and I see, you know, cheering crowds, you know, everybody's, you know, having a great time. It's a big coronation party and everyone's celebrating and they're out even despite the rain, the drizzle. And then, you know, you come back to the commentary, whether it's the BBC or our ABC or whatever, and it's all, well, you know, polls show most people find this terribly out of touch. And, and you know, it's, it's like there's this huge disconnect. Why is the media so intent on tearing down the royals? Is it that they don't like the competition for authority that the that this sort of institution poses to you know, basically, essentially, a sort of left wing revolutionary agenda? Well, I think it's because many mainstream out outlets see themselves as some sort of bastion of progressive uh, growth, I I should I say. And so they've taken many countercultural stances. It's actually quite unpopular now in mainstream media to be patriotic, to be proud of your country, to acknowledge all the good things and, and the bad things and say, you know, this is what makes our country great and let's keep learning from our mistakes and keep moving forward. That's actually a very countercultural and not very common view in, in, in our, many of our mainstream media outlets. Um, and for some reason, they, they tend to kind of preempt offense on, on behalf of particularly ethnic minorities, which I wish they would stop doing, mm. um, to justify their lack of, of, of patriotism themselves. I hear many people saying, oh, but what, what about black people what about this i'm like well ethnic minorities are not a monolith some of the most patriotic people i've met are actually people of ethnic minority background that tend to be older and tend to value tradition and wisdom of the past more than young people that just want to you know set fire to everything and think that's the form of progressive progress progressivism that we should be aiming towards um so actually even in even in trying to illustrate a lot of dissent for what they call an arch archaic institution they really try they tend to alienate voices that they, they claim to represent i mean i don't i don't really see people talking about ethnic minorities that are proud to be British, that are proud of British history, that are proud of, you know, coming from various parts of the empire and, and the contributions that they make to the United Kingdom and, and the Commonwealth at large. You never really hear that, even though those people do exist. And actually, statistically, ethnic minorities tend to be the most socially conservative pockets of this mm, country. Really, yes, 100%. So it's, well, a, it's such a weird paradox um, that you see. Well, yes, but they're, they're ignored because they're not convenient to the narrative. Uh, Prince Harry, let's talk a little bit of Harry because he just seemed to jump in a car and was whisked off to the airport as soon as humanly possible. He did show up, played a very minor role, I think was in the third row. Uh, Princess Anne was in front of him with a giant hat, which I enjoyed. Uh, just tell us how that has been received, that entire Prince Harry interlude. <clears throat> Well, I mean, many people were grateful for the fact that he was uh, only seen a little bit and not heard. Um, <laughs> and there were obviously many, many comments saying that he will come to regret this because he's effectively become a footnote in history. Mm. He has become, you know, the worst nightmare of any self-respecting person. He has become a parody. No one really respects him. I think it was a shame that his children miss um, such such an event because, again, it is a once-in-a-lifetime um, event. The next coronation will be um, probably in a few decades to come, and that will be of William. And I don't even know if their relationship will... Have, repet have recovered by then for that to even be a possibility. You know, he really has isolated himself in, it, in, in its entirety. And it, it is quite sad to see, to see someone who was a decorated um, military veteran who had all these patronages, who was very much well loved, and who who was who had a persona that was very warm and endearing to the British public. To see someone go from that to this kind of woke caricature of something that we don't even recognize is quite sad. Um, I mean, he did put on a brave face and he was all smiles and all of that, but really he had no part in the ceremony whatsoever. To be relegated to the background like the, that of disgraced Prince Andrew, mm. I mean, that really should say something because on, on the, in the grand scheme of things, his, his atrocities have been nowhere compared to his, his uncle Prince Andrew. And yet he has been such a distasteful character and so many people are over all of his whinging and his wife's antics but he effectively one of the greatest moments in history at least for this country in recent memory he was a footnote he mm. he had no part and you know he had to make the the walk down the abbey by himself uh, because he chose to come by himself because his wife megan chose to stay in california which is probably a good idea because i imagine <laughs> most people would have lined up with a row of uh, rotten tomatoes to throw at them <laughs> but the, the the point is it's it's quite a sad thing to see um because he is still the king's son and it's it, you know the rift is still very clear and still very so i'm sure he didn't have anything to say to his brother I, actually I, I i can't imagine at any point he would have gotten word with because, you know, the festivities and how quickly he came and left. 
Um, but it is really sad to see. I'm just glad that the coronation wasn't about him, which was what many people feared, and that it was a successful event, and it was something that we will definitely remember for years to come. Um, Esther, I'm glad you mentioned the role of Commonwealth countries. We played uh, Pretty Yende and, and, and the, uh, a group earlier singing. Uh, there was a lot of uh, multicultural involvement in the coronation itself. Tell us about those uh, kind of characters outside the Republicans, the British Republicans. How much, uh, I know there was, some of them were dragged off and there were a couple of banners and You're Not My King and there was some football clubs apparently singing. So what is the um, anti-monarchist sentiment in Britain? How strong is it or is it just kind of eccentric? Tell us. Mm. Well, I mean, part of it is countercultural. So I think you'll find, especially with the young generations that are, are less in favor of the monarchy, it's, it's really just a countercultural movement. You know, young people like to rebel. Young people like to think that they can do it better. Young people tend to have these grand ideas of what the country should look like until, of course, they start paying taxes and then they get a, quite, <laughs> quite a reality check in that way. But there was also a bit of an own goal that many Republicans scored for themselves today, which was, you know, a lot of them um, re reduced themselves to actual insults and really inappropriate, it's very odd uh, kind of posturing. So there were some uh, banners saying, not my king. <laughs> and on it, it had a pic pictures of Meghan Markle and saying the <laughs> people... <laughs> <laughs> and it, it it was the most comical thing, one, because she wasn't there, but also, two, everyone knows that the the people's princess is obviously the late uh, Princess Diana, and that term was coined, actually, when Tony Blair was paying homage to her after her tragic passing in 1997. Um, so to compare you know, what is truly the bona fide people's princess in the form of Princess Diana to this <laughs> attention-seeking narcissist in the form of uh, <laughs> Meghan Markle is, is quite funny, and I, I, I would like to think that in that way the Republicans kind of lost all credibility, um, because I, I can't even imagine if you're not for the monarchy, anyone would want to seek to idolise this um, zealous actor. That's <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Esther Cracker, always great to chat to you. Thank you so much for staying up so late there in London to chat to us about the coronation. Great to see you and we'll chat again soon.